if I'm spending all my time working and any extra time that I'm not working, I'm like, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to stop at the bar with a couple of guys before I come home. Or I'm going to, um, my dad asked me to help me with, help him with a project. So I'm going to go to the shop after, after work or whatever. Right. It then turns into, I am being super selfish with my time because you need my time. Whether, whatever that time looks like with us being together, it doesn't really matter all that much. It does matter some, but Mm -hmm. making sure that we're giving each other the time that we need to be good between the two of us. Hello, welcome to the UMS Together podcast. I'm Noah. I'm Cambria. We're The Roots. And we're at our kitchen table instead of in our office this time. Yeah. Because it's early. We're recording. It's actually not that early, but. Recording a morning podcast. This is what we do in the morning. One of our coffee ones. So, anyway, yeah, that's what we're doing. Today, we're talking about selflessness. Yeah. Do you want to say what episode it is? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's episode 30. (laughs) Good for a change of scenery. Exciting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we have an announcement to make too. We do. Yep. Okay. We um, just bought a new home. It's a new RV. Yeah. I didn't know where you were going yes. with this. Yeah, we bought it last week. Like two weeks two ago. Two weeks ago. And um, we're working on getting it kind of built out the way we want it so that we can move over there. It's going to have, like, we're hoping to have, like, a dedicated podcasting space in it, which will be super awesome. Yeah, so you'll get a different backdrop. Yeah. Maybe we'll, like, go to season two when that starts. Yeah, we'll probably do that. Um, anyway, so that's coming up. I also want to talk about my mug. Because it's a fun story. It's a fun story. If you can see it, it says, I believe in broccoli. Yeah, it has a little <clears throat> broccoli bushel. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Um, a bushel. A bushel. I don't know. Um, during our wedding ceremony, our pastor talked about bro- broccoli and fractals and how um, everything has kind of a ripple effect is basically the idea that he, 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 blah, that he was talking about. <laughs> Sorry, words are escaping me. Um, yeah, we were just talking about the ripple effect and how the, how a us as a married couple affects the world around us and we need to be uh we need to be the light in our world so that that can then ripple out to the rest of the world so anyway fun story about that and her grandma ended up buying these for us because she was at the ceremony and she ordered them for us but we didn't know it was from her yeah they just showed up on our front porch and we're like what is this package yeah, and opened heck? it and it had broccoli mugs in it so we're like that's got to be for us not some like yeah random person but there was no note yeah and we were really like weird. who sent us broccoli <laughs> mugs it was my grandma yeah we later figured out but it was a fun gift it was a fun and we gift. have two of them we have matching mugs yeah it's super fun i'm just not using mine today i have my auntie mug instead well because we've been in the rv we put one in storage so that we at least had one in case this one got broken yeah so Anyway, that's that. Let's get into it. Okay, first of all, if you always forget this part, we got to mention that if you guys ever want to reach out to us, we would love to hear from you. Um, we're on social media everywhere, almost everywhere. Yep. Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube yep. at umes.together. Mm-hmm. And you can also reach out to us on our website. There's not much there. There will be soon because we are working on merch as we speak. Not as we speak, but after we speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and our website is ymutogether.com. That's correct. Nailed it. Good job. Nailed it. <laughs> now we can get into it. Now we can get into it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, selflessness there's three main aspects we want to talk about do we want to do you want to like give an over like what do we mean by like selflessness selflessness and marriage um living a life of service 
Um, we've been talking about that a lot um, at church, actually. And so we thought it's a great opportunity to talk about it in context of marriage. Mm -hmm. And it's basically we need to preserve our personal resources in order to serve one another. That's a bit, that's a pretty easy way to put it. Yeah. And that, um, I'm just going to mention our three points we want to talk about during this episode. It comes to money and time and energy. Those are bi three big ones. They're probably not all of uh, they're definitely not all of them no but those are the points we want to hit yes absolutely so because those are really big ones that we see between us that it's like these are really important resources that we personally have and we have to reserve some of those for each other yeah um yeah that's that's what i think about that yeah so you awesome wanna, which one do you want to start um, with i also want to mention something real quick we've mentioned this a lot but the um the circles that we mentioned, like there's people in your oh, inner circle circles. and social yeah. circles, um, moving on out. <clears throat> um, just making your family. And when I say family, I mean you, me as a married couple and any of our kids, right. <clears throat> um, a priority. Mm -hmm. And, um, then out from there can be friends and family. And then out there from there can be acquaintances people you know but not really and then mm -hmm. out from there can be strangers but kind of just remembering your priorities when it comes to selflessness because often we neglect what's right here yes and say well other people need me uh, everyone else needs me i'm here to serve everybody else and it's like this is my number one priority right you're my inner circle and i can't give i need to focus on that first and then move out yeah it's really strange uh, concept because it's like I need to be I need to be selfish with my resources in order to use those to be selfless towards you mm -hmm. right I need to keep those from other people right I need to not spend all my time on other people because I know that you need my time yeah stuff like that not spend all your energy on other people because I need some of that too yeah absolutely not spending all of our money on other people yeah. or other things that may not be life-giving when I know that our family needs that for our future. Yeah. And if yeah. you have no money, time, or energy for me, it, this marriage isn't going to work if you're not going to give Absolutely. me that, yeah. what I need, you know? Yep. Anyway, yeah. now we can get into the three points. Yeah. Money is the first one. Okay, let's talk about money. <clears throat> um, where do we want to go with money? Let's talk about... Um, I want to start with giving, because we've been talking a lot about that. Um, just as far as giving to people around, the, around you that you see a need. Or people that... Um, <clears throat> things or people that God puts on your heart to give to. I think the amount of life that that will give you, right? Um, the amount of uh, reward that you will get, eternal reward and um, the, like right now reward that you will get from giving to other people and uh, ministries and uh, good causes, all those things. Um, the amount of reward that will come back to you is unmatched to... Um, keeping all your money to yourself that mm -hmm. being said we 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 can't just give all our money away right mm -hmm. because we still have to live we still have to be thoughtful of what our future is going to look like yeah um so finding that balance is hard um but i think that's a big point to make is we can't forget that um god wants us to be um, generous with the resources he gives us mm -hmm. yeah. something we did talk about yesterday or two days ago two days ago we were driving up to the mountains and cambria has been reading um for women only oh yeah 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 they have <clears throat> it's this couple that wrote two books there's one for women only and one called for men only okay. and their insight into each other yeah. and so the for women only is all about men Right. And how men operate, most of men, yeah. like the majority. And your the For Men Only book is all, all on women. Right. 
and how we operate to kind of like because we're just so different yeah just we're an insight so on different. how to love each other best and how to function together well yeah i was just thinking about it like it is hard to live this closely and this intimately with someone that you just don't understand mm -hmm. because you're male and i'm female and therefore we're just created differently yeah so it's really helpful to be able to understand some of these things and it's not that necessarily you're keeping them from me, but it's like, you don't know to tell me that this is how you work mm -hmm. and don't realize that it's different than how I work. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I just wanted exactly to give it. a So anyway, preface. Um, you've been reading through that book. Mm -hmm. um, I read through it with a, some guys I don't know, almost a year ago now, probably. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> we just talked through like you were like, is this actually how you are? And how does this make you feel? And you know, whatever. Um, but we talked about money and how, um, providing is really important to, to men. The yeah. majority of men feel they get purpose for being a pro pro from being a provider. Yeah. They feel like a need in them. Like this is part of my purpose. I yeah. have to do this because I'm the man. Exactly. A majority of men feel like even if they're their wife makes more money than they do that they still have the the burden of providing on their shoulders mm -hmm. like it's a need in them yeah it's very interesting um and it, i think god created us that way you know he wants us to he just created men to be the protector and the provider that's just how it is mm -hmm. um that's why most men are not nurturing like <laughs> like women um, we don't have a nurturing nature in that way because we're meant to be out providing for our family. Um, so what in that creates stress in a marriage as far as um, interactions between us and how our money operates? Um, so the point I wanted to bring up with discussing that book and you guys being the providers is that um, along the money lines... It is a lot of women like to shop and that means spending money. And I know I see it all over TikTok. Women share like their hauls from TJ Maxx or um, Marshalls or Ross or whatever or other stores. Um, and they'll come back and be like, I got another throw pillow for our couch so I can change them out. Or like um, some of the things, yes, are useful. They're not usually necessary. And learning that this provider thing is, is your purpose, that you feel like it's part of your purpose. And if I am constantly going out and buying things that we don't need, especially when we don't really have the funds to do that, I'm not, I'm living very selfishly instead of selflessly. Mm -hmm. um, so just keeping that in my head, like, I know this is something that stresses him out. It can be a huge stressor for me to do this. And remembering that and not thinking like, oh, but I want it, so I deserve it. Yeah, not justifying thing. every single purchase. Yeah. Because we talked about that. You're like, I justify it when I'm there. For some reason, you can just justify it. Yeah, I'll use it in this way. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just that's something that stood out to me was like unnecessary purchases are a big stretcher. Stressor, mm -hmm. not stretcher. Yeah. Stressor. Yeah, for sure. Um. I'm very selfish. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't treat yourself every once in a while. Yeah. But keeping that in the back of your head and being like, what's more important? More stuff for me or more love for you? Yeah. And even if we have that money in, in the budget, right, let's say, um, maybe it's something where we should consider, do we need, like, it, it, would be an interesting insight to go back over the last year and say, okay, all of these things were quote unquote unnecessary purchases, right? And um, those added up to X number of dollars. What if the, that number of dollars ended up going towards like a trip for our anniversary or a whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It's it, understanding where the money actually is going and what the actual cost of that, because it's it seems so minuscule when we're buying these little things, right? But it really does add up, and it's something we forget mm -hmm. often, is how much it adds up. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think also from the male perspective, like, yes, you have the provider thing on your back, but, um, if you're constantly going out, just buying whatever you want and I'm over here doing my best to love you by not buying unnecessary things, it's going to just feel so unfair. Like, what's the point of me really trying to do this? Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. If we're, um, we've talked about spenders versus savers. Um, a lot of, most common is one of you is a spender, one of you is a saver. Mm -hmm. Um, we fluctuate. There's times where we're both just, we just like to spend, we like to get fun things, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there are other times where one or the other of us is like super tight on where every cent is going. Yeah. Um, but it's it can be a dangerous thing when you both are spenders and you don't you don't know how to you're not communicating yeah. well about that you're not uh, you know really auditing all that it's really yeah yeah I think you can be selfless by spending money too like we're only talking about Absolutely. saving but like you're saying one of us is usually a spender one's a saver the spender can love the saver by not spending as much of course and the saver can love the spender by releasing control and getting something that truly matters or that they truly want. Absolutely. You know, instead of being like, no, you can never have that. We don't need that. Yeah. Um, allowing them to get something like that every once in a while or even surprising them with it. And can and, be a selfless act because you're releasing your control of your saving yeah. for them. I agree. Um, the love languages play right into that because, um, being selfless doesn't have to be, um, let's say my love, my top love language is gifts, right? You can't even imagine it. But no, let's that's say your bottom. That. That's my yeah. second. Let's say that. <laughs> and you love to get things, right? Mm -hmm. um, it is not a selfish thing. If you're, if you see something that it's like, man, no, I would really like this and you buy it and give it to me. It's not a, it's no longer selfish, but keeping in mind yeah. that. Um, understanding the money part yeah. is really important. Well, it's so. a hard thing because I wouldn't just say that's no longer selfish because if you're in a really, really, really tight budget absolutely, and you don't have room for extra things, yeah. it's like that's still selfish because you know it's going to stress them out and make them feel loved. Yeah, and all of these concepts come back to um, if we're not communicating about our money and... Um, how we're feeling about it and how we're feeling about each other's spending and how we're whatever, then yeah, this whole structure is going to fall apart because we can't, we can't just make all these assumptions and then <laughs> think that it's going to be okay. Yeah. We did this really interesting exercise yesterday when we went through our um, marriage devotional. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, it's our marriage journal time, but we are not going through the marriage journal. We're right. going through the story of us mm -hmm. journal. Um, and the whole thing was on money, yeah. which has been a huge topic the last couple of weeks. It just keeps coming up. Yeah. But um, the exercise they made us do is to say, what are your feelings towards finances? Mm -hmm. Your feelings towards money kind of thing, like right now. Because most people will answer something like stressed. Um, Worried, nervous, yeah. um, anxious. And yeah. where we really should be is content, at, at peace. peace yeah. And so um, understanding where each other are, because it's not really something, I don't think we've ever talked about what are your feelings towards money. Yeah. Like it's not something I thought about, but us being able to sit and both of us say stressed, mm -hmm. but also what else did we say? We both said stressed. I said at peace when I look back and see how God has provided for us. But yeah. it's hard for me to feel that in the moment. Absolutely. Um, um, and even right now, we feel less stressed than we ever have. Yeah. Just because we have more than we usually do mm -hmm. right now. Um, but yeah, it is this very um, hard balance of, yeah. of trying to figure out the finances and how we how that all yeah. fits together between the two of us. But I'd encourage you guys to to do that exercise maybe when you're um, sitting down at the dinner table. Like we talked mm -hmm. about last episode, yeah. not having 
every meal, you get one meal a day with your spouse not having that always be in front of a TV. So tonight, or whenever, when next time you sit down at the dinner table, and it's awkward because you don't know what to talk about, but you know it's good for your marriage because it's intentional time together. Yeah. There's a topic. There's a question for you guys to ask and talk about. Yeah. And actually, like, take time to to understand it. I know um, women are usually more emotional, more in tune with their feelings. Men generally are not. And it's easy for you to just be like, I don't know. I don't know what I feel. Mm-hmm. And leave it at that. Like, not even try. Yeah. So try. Like, I know it's hard. And maybe it's like, I'm. I will think about it, but give me 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, when I would get, um, really, um, angry or frustrated when I was little, my mom had this sheet from one of the Bible studies she's led for years and it was an emotion seat, sheet and it had like all these different emotions. And she said, point to what you're feeling. And it made me so mad cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> but and I it was a good exercise to understand what the feeling is that I have inside yeah. of me. Yeah. And when we were dating and engaged, I was an emotional wreck. Like, I just didn't know how to, like, be in tune with my feelings. I just felt like feelings were bad. Mm-hmm. If you're feeling something, that's bad. Um, and so I was just, I was an emotional wreck. And you would always joke, do I need to pull out my mom's feeling sheet? <laughs> and it would make me mad, like, no, because I should know <laughs> this. But, yeah, yeah, you would joke about that with me. You never actually pulled it out, because I don't think you actually even had it. But, yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Um, so, um, money. I feel like we covered that pretty well. Yeah. Um, it's just important for the two of you to be on the same page with money. Yeah. Often one person in the marriage is the financial person and takes care of it. And the other person doesn't. That is a good point. Actually, we talked about yesterday yeah. is mm-hmm. you were like, I don't, ex- you kind of said to me, that you don't expect to um, ever really have to um, handle our finances, Mm -hmm. but you would like to learn how our money works, where it is, where it's going, all that stuff. Yeah. And so we're going to spend some time sitting down and doing that soon because it's just helpful to know. Yeah. Because it can give you peace of mind, but it can also, um, like, if you know, man, we aren't actually as, uh, we don't have as much as I thought we did, Mm -hmm. then it helps you to be more conscious when you're in the store and you're looking at whatever thing. It's like, okay, I, I know for sure. I've seen the numbers. We can't afford to do extra things right now. Yeah. In my mind, that's how that would work, but maybe it's not. No, I agree. I think where you and I are at right now, like just us, not other people. Mm -hmm. Um, you handle our finances. I don't really know anything about it. And I'm in this phase right now where I just want to spend money. Yeah. It's just a desire. I just want to go buy new things. And it's a weird thing right now. It's hard for me to be like, to know, like, what can I spend money on? What can't I spend money on? Just not even not just things that are unnecessary, but like, should I buy the great value brand or should I buy the name brand? Yeah. Where are we at right now? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Yeah. And I want to love you in that way, but it's hard to love you when I'm in the dark mm-hmm. on that. Yeah. Which isn't your fault or my fault. It's just something that we realized yesterday. Like, it would be really helpful if we were both in tune with each other and know that know where our finances are at. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Part of that, too, for me is I really struggle struggled to tell you no. I have more recently, like, no, we can't do that, or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't want to totally put a stop to you can't get things that you want, because I know that you really enjoy doing that. Mm-hmm. And, like, you, re- you told me the other day, man, my mar- all my markers are drying out. I'd love to get some new markers. And I said, okay, we can do that soon. And you got it, found a good deal and you got them. And it, I saw the box and it stressed me out a little bit, but it's like, I know that all her markers are drying out. It's not a big deal. Um, but it's just one yeah. of those, it's just another thing where we need to continue to have that conversation, that dialogue back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 
yeah. Um, I don't know what I was going to say about that, but yeah, just being able to be on the same page with that was mm -hmm. helpful. And that's something that we're going to, we're going to try to do. So if you guys aren't there, just know we're not either <laughs> and yeah. we're going to be working on it so you can work on it with us. Yeah. We can do it together. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to selflessness. <laughs> Okay, the next one is time. Yes. Do you want to take this one? Um, not really. <laughs> You're the one that came up with all three aspects in there. Okay. Trying to remember the reasoning for each. All right, so being selfless with our time. It's so easy to say, well, we need to make more money, right? Tying this in with our money, right? We need to... We've got bills, we've got this, that, and the other things. We have dreams of what, where we want to be financially. And so I'm going to spend as much time as I can at work, working my butt off, trying to make extra money, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But what can happen, This, the next two points are hard, time and energy. Our mm -hmm. last one is energy because they do go hand in hand often. Yeah. Um, but time... If I'm spending all my time working and any extra time that I'm not working, I'm like, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to stop at the bar with a couple of guys before I come home. Or I'm going to, um, my dad asked me to help me with, help him with a project. So I'm going to go to the shop after, after work or whatever. Right. It then turns into, I am being super selfish with my time because you need my time. Whether whatever that time looks like with us being together, it doesn't really matter all that much. It does matter some, but mm -hmm. making sure that we're giving each other the time that we need to be good between the two of us, right? Yeah. And that, that time can be used, I mean, it could be used for any number of things. It could be just hard conversations that we need to have or good conversations we need to have. It could be um, dreaming together. It could be... Uh, just time so that we can actually be intimate because yeah. we never make the time for it, right? Or sometimes it's just being together. Yeah, whatever like, that is. We don't is. have to be doing something. I just need to be with you. Yeah, whatever that may be. Um, so not being selfish with my personal time. And mm -hmm. same with you, right? I, I expect that if I'm going to work every single day and you... Um, I expect that you will be somewhat available a uh, couple days a week to be together with me when I get home from work, right? Mm -hmm. Or on the weekends or whatever, right? I I expect that you're not going to schedule something every evening during the week so that we can have some time together during the week. Yeah. Because um, that can really wear on us when it's like, well, I just haven't even seen you all week and now it's, you know... Saturday and you and I need to go to uh, these couple of different events because yeah. that's when people plan things, right? Yeah. And so now all of a sudden our together time isn't you, me time. It's us with all these other people. Yeah. And it's not, it, it's not the same. No. Yeah. I don't, I don't really care what your marriage looks like. You need to spend time together. And Not as much time as us. We spend a lot of time together. We don't expect pe everyone to be able to spend as much time as we do. We feel very fortunate. In that yes, way. but I just feel like some people be like, "Well, I'm an introvert. I don't need as much time with them." But like, you got married, and the point of marriage is to do life together. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that if you're not spending any time together. Yeah. Like. And. And this needs to continue to grow. Not stay stagnant. Absolutely. And you can't do that without spending time together. And so. keeping, we need to continue to keep in mind that Satan is going to use our time apart to try and put a wedge between us. He'll use anything he can. And so if we're in the same house, but we're choosing to not be together, Satan certainly is going to put things in front of us, put things between us. In order to create yeah. conflict, in order to push us apart, in order to... Because he knows that we are stronger together. Yeah. We're stronger together when we're good. Yes. When our relationship is good. Yeah. 
So I know a lot of people work all day, both of them come home, are exhausted. Of course. And there's just not much left. Um, Being intentional about still spending time together, whether it's um, recovering together. Like if there's something that you really like to do to recover, allowing me into that space and letting us do it together. Mm -hmm. Um, Same with me. Or finding new things. Yeah. There's so many different things we can do. I just feel like it's a... People need to have their time by themselves Mm -hmm. to be them. Yeah. Which I'm not saying you're not allowed to spend time by yourself, but it's like, why can't you invite your spouse into that world a bit and do it together? Mm -hmm. You know, instead of coming home... And being like, I'm exhausted, so the only thing I need to do is be by myself and play video games. Yeah. Why can't you play video games with me? Yeah. Or why can't I sit next to you and we can do this together? You yeah. know? And so, like, arranging your time to make sure that, um, yes, certain things need to be done. Like, you need to um, make money and go to your job. But your spouse is still supposed to be your number one priority. And making sure that they stay at the top. Yeah. Um, I saw this TikTok a few days ago. This It was a scene where a guy walked into the house from work. Right, He had just gotten home. He walked in. His wife was starting to cook dinner. He came in, gave her a peck, and then started to walk upstairs because he was going to go play his game for two hours or whatever. And it was like his inner self. He was having dialogue with himself as he was walking up the stairs. And he's... You know, his, this dialogue, the guy's like, what are you doing? He's like, well, I need to go decompress. And he's like, but your wife has been dealing with screaming kids. She's been alone all day. And you just walked in and barely acknowledged her. And now you're going to just go be by yourself. She needs you right now. And so you can decompress. Absolutely. But she needs you first. Mm -hmm. And you need to muster up that little bit of energy to spend the time with her and more likely than not um anyway that was the whole scene but most likely what's going to come out of you spending time with your wife in that way is your night is just going to be better you're going to be able to laugh together and enjoy your each other's company yeah or you're going to be able to just talk about your day together right um because it's not it's not good enough to just say how was your day it was fine right it's not good enough yeah we need to like i know you love when i come in from a whole day of work you love to just hear a play-by-play of what went on during the day mm-hmm. rather than <clears throat> yeah it was all right right yeah. because you want to get a feel into my world you want to understand where i'm at mm-hmm. and so um figuring out those blocks of time, how to arrange them, if you will, right? That's how I think of it is I've got all these blocks of time. I've got my work time. I've got my together time. I've got my decompression time, whatever. And so how do I best arrange these to make it work best, right? Yeah. 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 I'd agree with that. Anyway, I thought it was a really neat scene because we have talked about decompression and I think it's super important for a lot Mm -hmm. of guys that, um, that work hard jobs. Um, but there is something to be said about realizing maybe that decompression doesn't have to be right mm-hmm. when you get home. Absolutely. Yeah. Kick your boots off and go <clears throat> change, but, yeah. um, don't go hide away in your cave yeah. for two hours or whatever. I think a wife also needs decompression from the screaming kids. Absolutely. And you're supposed to be a team. And if you can't rely on your teammate, mm-hmm. but you got to change something there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this actually is a good transition into being selfless with our energy. Okay. Um, if my, if I feel like, man, I am wiped from my day, either of us, right, in that situation, mm-hmm. um, it is, your spouse will be feel so loved if you can selflessly, this isn't every day, but if you can recognize that they are just done from their day Mm -hmm. and you can come in and say you know what 
why don't you go um, take a bath, relax for an hour. I'll finish dinner and take care of, watch the kids while you're doing that because I know that you need that. Mm -hmm. Um, Recognize, just understanding where each other's at and having that conversation and really that's part of going through each other's days right Mm -hmm. is realizing kind of diving into the struggles that each other is dealing with from that day yeah um in today's culture of everyone has to be busy all the time Mm -hmm. um most people's energy tanks are low generally And, um, where was I going with that? It's about pressing into the hard and not just accepting where you're at. Yes. Um, we talked about that at church, like, um, pressing into the hard more, Mm -hmm. um, because both of your energy tanks are low. You can't be like, well, you have more energy than me, so I'm just going to not do anything because you can do it all Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, that that selflessness that sacrifice knowing this is where i'm at and it's gonna be hard for me to to get to where you need me to be but you're worth it and i'm gonna do my best absolutely to get there yeah. and we're not gonna be perfect every time yeah and we need to have grace with each other yes so maybe you don't have much energy when you get home but mustering up enough to to sit down for dinner with your wife or mustering up enough to make um, a meal for your husband. It doesn't even have to be fancy. Mm-hmm. Spaghetti is delicious and easy. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you had to say delicious. You love food. I love food. <laughs> I do. But, you know. Yeah. Um, being willing to um, accept your spouse when they're not up to your standards. Because they're, they're tired. They yeah. don't have the energy. And be, instead of just being like, well, you're not holding up your side of the bargain, instead being there to lift them up, even mm-hmm. if you don't have the energy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is all about meeting each other where, we, where we're at. Mm-hmm. And it's all about um, understanding that it's going to take sacrifice, but we are called to live sacrificially <clears throat> for each other. And for, obviously, for the people around us, we're mm-hmm. not negating serving other people. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Mm-mm. But It's an important thing, and it's super bonding to do together. Serving other people can't get in the way of our bond, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I notice, especially in our marriage specifically, because we live in such close proximity to family, and also just the way my mind works um I tend to think well we signed a contract we're married nothing's going to change that other people need me I need to go deal with them Mm -hmm. they're more important because the bible says to be a servant and serve other people and so I need to constantly be helping them and I neglect you absolutely right in front of me the most important person on this earth to me and so remembering that and d- not saying don't help other people, but this is your top priority yeah. right here. And I need to make sure I am serving you and there for you when I need to be. And then next out in the circle, my next time can be towards other people. Yeah. And not saying it's never okay to drop everything to go help someone. And I think that's something where you and your partner need to be on the same page with that. And say, my mom really, really needs my help. And you say, yes, she does go do that. Mm -hmm. But then that doesn't mean that I get to always put her first. But that's a every once in a while thing. But um, like you supporting your spouse and something they need to do is also selfless. Because you could say, no, I need your time. Yeah. 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 You're okay. Yeah, I You're just, I still have my morning voice and I feel like I gotta just keep coughing. And yeah, you seem a little emotional about that. I just... We have a lot of stuff from um, making other people a priority over each yeah. other. I just feel like, yeah. I don't have any research on it, but a lot of divorce, I'm assuming, is just because people don't treat their spouse as a priority anymore. Mm-hmm. 
And a lot of times, maybe they don't deserve it. Most of the time. <laughs> I'm like, do you really deserve me to treat you this well? Yeah. But it's a team effort and you can't just give up. I don't know. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I know you wanted to talk about like intimacy when it comes to energy. I don't actually remember what I wanted to talk about. I do. Um, <clears throat> you told me you wanted to talk about how oftentimes when it, the best time for sex for most people is at night because that's the only time they have together. That's the time and that that's when they convenient. don't have any energy. Mm -hmm. um, so being selfless and knowing like my spouse needs this, even if I don't feel like I need it right now, you do need it. Everyone needs it. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, gotta have sex in marriage. Um, but knowing like my spouse really, really could use this right now. I know I don't really have the energy for it, but I'm going to muster up enough energy for them. Yeah. Or maybe it's it's not going to be like an all-out extravagant, thing, passionate yeah. thing. But, you know, yeah. that's the thing that often gets overlooked with energy. It's, do you want to have sex? No, I'm too tired. Yeah. Well, and there are, uh, I mean, read through the Song of Solomon, right? There are so many examples of sex is meant to be a selfless act and that's it right and so um you know like you were talking about with our energy you know if i don't feel like i have um i need it and i don't feel like i have that much energy my spouse needs it obviously there's a give and take mm -hmm. um but there's there are times where it's like i know you need it and i'm so so i'm going to serve you in this way yeah so, good job. Um, something I want to add to it is noticing when your spouse, this isn't adding to the intimacy, it's okay. adding to the overall point. Yeah. Noticing when your spouse is being selfless and acknowledging it and thanking them for it. Oh, yeah. Is a, is a big thing. Yeah. Definitely thanking each other for things or. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Because if it's not. Um, not necessarily reciprocated, but if it's not that the selflessness isn't uh, recognized, it becomes harder mm -hmm. to be selfless if it's never recognized. Yeah. You're like, by well, what's the point? Other. Yeah, it's like, do you actually care about me uh, <laughs> being kind to you and serving you? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, I just wanted to add that little point in because I just thought of it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well. That's it. I would encourage everyone to think of those three categories, money, time, and energy, and just think of one way that they can be selfless towards their spouse in each category. I like that. Like, how can I love you by being selfless through money? Yeah. I'm and just being selfless through week. time and being selfless through energy. Yeah. And <clears throat> being aware of those situations this week and really um, trying to push in on being a... Being sacrificial towards each other. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, if you made it this far in the podcast, um, we appreciate it. We love you. Um, we just are going to keep doing these. Mm -hmm. We love doing them. We love talking. Yeah, this is it's so spending fun. time together. Heck yeah. Yeah, you're being selfless today by taking time to record this instead of out working. working i know feel a little bad it's okay need it done yep thank you um if if this topic brought up any questions in your mind reach out to us we probably will record us a, a whole separate podcast on your question if you want because it's really important to us that we dive into the details and we really get to the heart of what this marriage thing is supposed to look like Mm -hmm. So if you made it through all this and it's like, well, you weren't really clear on this point, yeah. uh, leave a comment, <clears throat> send us a message, whatever you yeah. want. Um, Even if it's a question that's not related to this podcast. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. If it just brought something up and it's like, oh, man, I would really like to hear about this. Yeah. We'd love to talk we about that. We want to make content that is relatable to um, to married people, especially newly married Um 
Yeah. Not necessarily newlyweds. But yes, newlyweds. Yeah. But in those first few years of life where you're trying to just figure this all out, mm-hmm. not that you ever stop figuring it out, but there's more in the first few years. Yeah, it's a big learning curve and we want to be, we want to make it as easy as possible for people because we went through plenty of the pain of figuring it out uh, <clears throat> too late is what it felt like. Not too late, but it was just like, we just went through some really hard stuff early yeah. on. But I mean, like six months after we got married, we moved, lived with other people, moved again. It was just like, yeah. yeah. So. All that to say, yeah. we love meeting people and talking to people. So even if you just want to say, hey. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we will see you all next week. Yep. Next week. Yeehaw. Bye. Bye.